As coronavirus shut down the global economy, the value of American stocks plummeted. In the weeks that followed, COVID-19 killed tens of thousands of Americans. Racial unrest tore through the country and a record 23 million were out of work. But the stock market climbed and climbed. By June 8th, it had gained 38% since its low point in mid-March. This idea that the stock market and the economy should move in tandem suggests that we're all in this together. And this divergence belays bare that that is not the case. So why is the value of American stock so seemingly cut off from current events? And what does this tell us about the wider economy? In the 400 years stock markets have been around, their basic function hasn't really changed. The purpose of the stock market is for firms to be able to raise capital to invest and grow larger and more successful and more efficient. There are stock exchanges all over the world. The largest is the New York Stock Exchange, on which companies worth $21 trillion are listed. The fortunes of companies listed on this exchange and the lives of ordinary Americans used to be more closely aligned. In the 1950s, the New York Stock Exchange made a concerted effort to tempt small investors who had been scared off by the Wall Street crash of 1929. Investors all over the country use the facilities of brokers who are members of the New York Stock Exchange whenever they want to buy or sell stock of companies listed on this national market. In the 1950s, 90% of the stock market or more was held by sort of small retail investors. And so you had these sort of two feedback effects. One was if the economy was doing well, firms were doing well, stock prices would rise. And the other one was, well, when stock prices were rising, people would feel wealthier. You had these dual links that meant that the stock market and the economy, the, the health of both tended to move together. In 2020, things look very different. And American stock markets and the economy seem poles apart. To understand why, look at the indices that track the value of companies whose stock is being traded. When you talk about the value of stocks, the value of the stock market, uh, what most people are really talking about is the value of these indices. And probably the most famous one um, in America is the S&P 500, which is the value of America's 500 largest publicly listed firms. All being equal, the value of an index will rise if the companies it tracks are expected to do well. The value of the S&P 500 has mainly been climbing since March. This is partly due to the fact it includes some of the world's largest and most successful technology companies. Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon and Alphabet, Google's parent company. And these companies have thrived during the pandemic which has boosted the overall value of the S&P. Any stock market index that has a lot of technology companies in it will probably have been sort of less damaged by the pandemic than, than indices that don't have those companies in them. And that's not necessarily uh, anything to do with the American economy recovering from the pandemic better. Their sort of business models seem fundamentally less impacted by the pandemic, possibly even helped in the case of firms that provide software or firms that deliver goods to your home. But the performance of the SMP is not simply driven by these tech giants. In early March, overall share prices in companies listed here were falling, and the SMP only rallied the day after the Federal Reserve, America's central bank, announced it would be stepping in with a series of enormous aid packages to help prevent economic disaster. We have acted to safeguard financial markets in order to provide stability to the financial system and to support the flow of credit in the economy. The Fed created new money to buy corporate bonds 
and lend to companies, allowing businesses to borrow cash on an almost unprecedented scale. And while the impact of the Fed's actions is taking time to play out in the real economy, share prices rallied almost immediately. The S&P 500 recorded the biggest week of gains in more than four decades. This is a Fed rally. This is not an earnings rally. A lot of the power in what the Fed does is in the, the signaling value. It basically stacks the deck against things continuing to decline. And so when you get that sort of signal uh, from the Fed, it, it makes it much sort of safer, I guess, to buy stocks. Stock markets are forward looking as share prices are based on investor predictions. So it's not unusual for them to rally long before the real economy picks up. But while the course of a normal recession is relatively predictable, the economic consequences of a pandemic and lockdowns are much harder to price. The hard reality is this is not even close to being over. And some fear the Fed's actions have created a false sense of optimism. We really have no idea how long this economic damage will last. It does feel like we have got genuinely sort of more bad news, but perhaps this idea of a second wave or an extended first wave in America that will mean that the economic damage will be bigger than we thought it would be in March. And that doesn't seem to have sort of popped the, the market's bubble. The way stock prices have risen also creates an awkward side effect for policymakers. The Fed's actions prevented economic catastrophe and emergency support provided by Congress actually pushed the poverty rate down. But the fact that the stimulus packages caused the value of shares on the S&P to rise has inevitably disproportionately benefited the rich. When the Fed steps in and sort of increases the amount of money um, in an economy in a crisis, what you tend to see is the value of assets go up even as the real economy struggles. Um, and this, it does feel very unfair. Most Americans own stock through investment plans like pensions. But the wealth of the rich is far more concentrated in stocks. 88% of those earning over $100,000 per year own stock, as opposed to 19% of those earning under $35,000 a year. And the vast majority of all stocks owned by Americans belong to the wealthiest 10% of households. The Fed couldn't have not bailed out firms and um, markets because the, the damage that that would have wrought for everyone, rich and poor, would have been much worse than the, the alternative. But it is a very uncomfortable dynamic for policymakers because of this sort of link between what they can do and asset prices. They, they seemingly have to help everyone by helping in particular the rich. The SNP's recent meteoric rise has now leveled off, but ultimately the fate of both stock markets and the economy are tied. And as America begins to reckon with the long-term impact of the pandemic, the health of both will depend on how and when the federal stimulus is eventually reduced and how quickly a vaccine becomes available. I'm Alice Fullwood. I'm The Economist's Wall Street correspondent. If you want to read more about COVID-19 and how it's affecting the economy, then please click the link opposite.